Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to not another episode of Fantasy News. I am still your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green. And today we're going to be talking about my list of the top 10 sci-fi fantasy horror movies of all time time. I want to experiment just a little bit with incorporating my love of horror on the channel and I figured there's no better way than to stick within the domain I'm oh so no at oh so well known for fantasy sci-fi and just put an overlay of horror on top. Now before I go ahead and kick off this list though I need to say some very obvious things to avoid comments that are just like Duh, but I still have to say it. This is a personal preference list, so if you do not see your favorite movie that falls within these labels on here, it means I either do not like it as much as you or have not seen it. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the list. I really had no asterisks going into this. No, I'm trying to achieve anything aside from just showing my audience my top 10 sci-fi fantasy horror movies of all time. So I'm not really trying to do much aside from just show you my taste, my palette going forth into this oh so spooky genre. But let's go ahead and kick this off with a rather recent entry for horror, and that is going to be Witch, or as some people call it online, The Vitch. It might just be me who calls it that. It's spelled VV. I'm gonna say Vavitch. It sounds cool. As with most big horror fans, atmosphere plays a gargantuan role in how much I'm going to enjoy whatever scary narrative is about to be put forth in front of me. And I cannot think of a recent horror movie that has a more immersive atmosphere than Witch. Directed by Robert Eggers, he had an absolute commitment to making his actors realize the time period in which he was putting them in. So every line of dialogue delivered throughout this movie sounds like it's coming from yield in English. And the sets are so meticulously built. You feel as if you are isolated with this family in the woods. And the psychological game that then plays out is breathtaking. This movie, actually, when I sat down and watched it with my girlfriend at the time, I wasn't very afraid during the viewing experience, but that night when we both laid down in bed, there was very much so a, let's close the blinds. Let's just close the blinds. Check under the bed. Just check under the bed, just for, just check into the bed please. On a scale of 1 to 10 of actual horror, I would rate this one about a 6. It's very much so about the suspense, there's not many jump scares at all, and it's the feeling, just the sound design looking over these stark bleak woods where you feel so alone with this family. Seeing the abuse from the father, the descent into insanity from just about everyone due to the fear. It's slowly paced, the acting is incredible, and overall for which I would actually give this a 10 out of 10 for a horror movie, which not every movie on this list I'm going to say, but this one for me, oh my god is it just flawless. But I know what some people are gonna say, hey I'm into horror for the ultimate scares, give me a movie that's actually going to scare the bejesus out of me and not just make me feel tense and creeped out for an extended period of time. And I got you too, boo. Continuing with the modern entries for horror but flipping on over to what would be considered foreign for American viewers, we have Rec 1 and 2 and yes I am lumping them together because they absolutely can be enjoyed as one viewing experience. Just let me get away with it so I can incorporate more awesome movies for you to check out in this list. Awesome, let's go. Rec has certainly reached mainstream audiences. If you like horror, this movie has probably been discussed in your circles, and there's a pretty good chance you've actually already seen it. But if you have not, by some happenstance, and you like the infected creature coming at the people idea that goes on, oh, Rec does an absolutely stupendous job. The American remake quarantine, I believe it's called, was fine, but comparing fine to one of the most tense and terrifying horror movies I've ever experienced, it's not a good substitute. Just throw in the subtitles and watch a movie that had a fairly limited budget just absolutely explode before you. The cast of characters trying to survive as we watch this reporter who's trying to just live a night on the job but ends up getting sucked into a nightmare scenario, that's the setup for this movie, a reporter trying to do like a community piece that ends up getting sucked into, well, no spoilers, but you know, 
this, I cannot stress enough just how well this premise was executed. Directed by the duo of Wame Belagaro and Paco Plaza, this movie actually changed my opinion on something I used to believe. I used to think it was impossible for a movie to sit at high tension continually and not eventually just feel tiresome to experience. I used to think every movie must have lulls, breaks for the audience for you to kind of breathe and then jump back into the tension. Wreck absolutely obliterates that idea. Even in the kind of less tense moments, I was sitting on the edge of my seat going internally because it's so good at never letting you feel comfortable. And it's not just the threat from the infected, it's the threat from fear, the threat from panic, the threat from the government. God damn! Rec 1 and 2 are absolutely must-watches for horror fans, in my opinion, and I would say they're both a solid 9 with the actually interesting addition here that I think the sequel's better than the first, and I believe that's a common opinion. All right, all right, all right. I've given the modern it's time to shine, or modern rec came out well over 10 years ago but i want to go back into the past to talk about some films that laid down the foundation for horror to live off from today and the first one i want to mention is night of the living dead because yes it's a classic and almost every horror or film snob period has seen this movie but an amazing number of people my age, it turns out, have not, and that is an absolute disgrace. Directed by the, everyone knows him, George Romero, this movie did not invent zombies, which is a misconception that is often put out. No, here's a movie that actually had zombies in it before Night of the Living Dead, but it certainly reinvented and popularized a certain image of the zombie, which the entire zombie subgenre within horror now pretty much springboards off from. George Romero's Night of the Living Dead is an absolute banger on nearly all fronts. It's aged stupendously well, especially for it having some aspects of it that were considered out of date for the time it was released in. Most movies were in color by this point, but it being black and white makes it actually age better for audiences today because it just has this immersive element to once again the atmosphere that is just so, so, so brilliant. There's racial undertones to this movie as well that George Romero has admitted he did not intentionally put in there, but are undoubtedly there. And if you somehow do not know the ending of this movie, it's overt enough that you'll absolutely understand what I'm talking about. And George Romero has again gone on kind of humorously many times to talk about the fact that like, yes, uh, that they're obviously there, I just didn't really think of it <laughs> from the beginning. Night of the Living Dead does fall into the horror category of having many sequels or reboots and stuff going on. I believe that is to really not the detriment of the original because they feel so am amazingly disconnected to me due to them being in color on like surface value and just dealing like such different films that it, it doesn't really bother me though I think none of the sequels come anywhere close to the quality of the first one here. If you like a slow burn influential not jump scare at all but just imagery and tone Night of the Living Dead is one you need to check out and okay I've done some pretty standard horror picks up until now like these are not anything that's going to like blow anyone's mind now I want to get into the weird of horror eraser head this is a movie I'm gonna assume the least amount of people who are watching this video have actually seen it is a strange horror piece that derives its terror almost entirely from the absurd and this is an example of absurdism being used for horror and comedy i laugh at this movie and i cringe at it it's never like ah oh, scare but it's a lot of oh, discomfort the basic premise is a man must take care of his spawn and it does fall into the sci-fi fantasy categories due to the fact that there are absolutely elements existing here that you cannot explain otherwise it's probably the least like leaning into these subgenres i'm talking about but i'm still going to include it because goddamn i love this movie from the performances to the creative choices and my god the practical effects. So I'm a very big fan of practical effects in horror. I think they have such charm and I'm so interested 
and how they come into existence. Everything from the design of the xenomorph and alien to the evolution of Predator, I've had a long hobby of just looking into how creature effects come to life, but I have rarely seen a movie with such a severely limited budget pull off such grotesque and fascinating practical visual effects as Eraserhead largely due to just extreme creative talent behind the camera and a masterful hand holding the camera. This movie took an extraordinary amount of time to make and such extreme dedication for the actors that this guy had this hair for a long ass time. I feel bad for him. For a horror rating for a racer head, it's at like a two or three. Really, you're just gonna have moments of like, oh. Ooh. But nothing beyond that, though that imagery might stick with you for a long time. It's a descent into madness, it's absurdism in horror, which is something I want to see explored more often, and yeah, this, I can't say too much because I don't want to get into spoilers, but this is one I feel like more people need to watch to understand just how far cinema can go in ways that most people are not normally exposed to. A fun story about this is I called my dad the first time after I watched Eraserhead, and I just told him, hey, I just watched Eraserhead, and he just started laughing, which is a very appropriate response to someone watching Eraserhead. <laughs> now, already at this point in the list, I'm going to be getting comments from people who didn't even bother to finish or skipped ahead, and they're gonna be leaving things like, how did you not include Annihilation or Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Something along those lines. And the answer to that is either, I didn't like it enough, or I don't feel like it's the proper genre because like, there's nothing fantastical or scientific about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's just a slasher. And if you love It Follows, wonderful, but that doesn't necessarily crack into my top 10. Neither does Sunshine or Event Horizon, which I used to say almost did, but upon rewatching it, not so much. But here, firmly, I believe within the next top 10 is going to be the Evil Dead trilogy. Evil Dead 1, 2, and Army of Darkness. This might be the most aggressive shift in tone I've ever seen in a horror franchise with still somehow feeling properly in the right story. The Evil Dead franchise starts with a, I don't want to say typical, but an example of the in the cabins and being attacked by supernatural forces horror trope, but by the third movie has gone full on time traveler horror comedy and it works. Somehow. I get that there are some people who will probably enjoy just the first two movies and not the third. Maybe people not enjoy the first two and only the third. I don't know. I like all three. But if you are looking for horror that has a firm protagonist you can latch onto, Ash might be one of my all-time faves for the horror genre. He evolves throughout these movies in maybe not the most believable way, but certainly an entertaining one. And I feel like that's the overall premise for Evil Dead as a whole. It is entertaining. I highly recommend the kill count videos on these movies. They are fantastic over at Dead Meat. And I think he does a very good job going in and exploring why exactly these films turned out the way they did. But especially if you are a fan of movies that have creative approaches to cinematography and editing, these might reign supreme for their era of horror. There are so many who have tried to imitate the Evil Dead style, and none of them have topped it. This is Sam Raimi's creative vision, and while he has expressed certain regrets about some elements of the storytelling, overall, I think these need to be observed for not only their influence, but their importance for what they represent for horror as a whole, which I think is a fantastic embracing of a creator's vision, regardless of where people might think it should go and how it can work out with just someone going, screw it. This feels right and I want to do it. Because even the first Evil Dead movie bulks against many things you might come to expect from horror as a whole. And if you're in for a wild ride and don't have too sensitive of eyes when it comes to just sensory input. I think Evil Dead is a great little trip to go on. I know some people do not love this film trilogy, and I honestly completely agree with a lot of the criticisms, but how can you hate a movie where a man gets in a fight with his own possessed hand and the physical comedy chops are just, oh, love it. All right, I'm just gonna mention a couple ones that I don't need to spend much time on because you know them, you've heard of them, they should be in the list, but I don't have much to contribute to the conversation, so let's just go ahead and get them out of the way. The Shining, fantasy horror that is largely considered one of the greatest films of all time with some of the greatest performances the genre has ever seen. It's a must watch, again, for anyone who just wants to see good movies, and if you have not seen it, why? Next up, we have 
Alien, the greatest sci-fi horror movie of its time and debatably all time, with one of the greatest protagonists the horror or sci-fi genre has ever seen in Ellen Ripley. This has the greatest creature design of any horror film ever, and maybe one of the most immersive space terror atmospheres of all time as well, with its usages of dark spaces and claustrophobia and just tension through multiple threats going on at once. It absolutely fully utilizes the dangers of space, and Alien is generally what I would consider a flawless film. Alien is in my top 10 movies of all time, and I would give the horror rating of it probably for its time like a eight, nine, but you know, we're a bit more numb now. I would say it's still probably hovering at like a six to seven and for some people, it will be higher than that. But let's go ahead and stick with the sci-fi horror greats and discuss another one of my just flat out favorite films of all time that you've probably heard me gush about here repeatedly on the channel, and that is going to be The Thing. I might regret saying the greatest creature design of all time goes to the Xenomorph because the creature in The Thing is more impressive in some ways in its presentation and the absolute creativity behind the utilization of such a concept. If you are somehow unaware of the concept of the thing, researchers in snowy, snowy, cold place in extreme isolation have to deal with the fact that they discover there is an alien loose among them who can shapeshift into any organic thing. And essentially hell breaks out. You can nitpick this film, but overall I would challenge anyone to rate it lower than like an 8, and that is if you are being as harsh as you possibly could be. Awesome performances, and an ending that leaves just about every viewer clawing for answers, and oh my god, I cannot believe they tried to make a sequel slash other thing. It's already a reboot. Just just leave it as the masterpiece it is, my god! But this does kind of fall into similar territory as The Shining and Alien, so I'm not gonna spend too much more time talking about it, because most of you have probably already seen it and know it well. Let's move on to one that, again, I feel like younger audiences need to pick up, because, oh, it's so good. And that's going to be An American Werewolf in London. American Werewolf in London is about an American exchange student who is traveling abroad. And I guess, spoiler alert, but he has an encounter with a werewolf. And then we descend into one of the most interesting balances of absurdism and horror I've seen, because this movie gets absurd, extremely so, to the point where you have a zombie friend kind of just walking around talking to him in a comedic relief way. Like, it's, it's brilliant in that sense. But it then will turn around and have what I believe to still be the greatest werewolf transition cinema has ever seen. It's tense, it's funny, it's quick. This is a, an amazingly quick watch. I don't know how long the actual runtime is, I'll put it up right there. But when the credits started rolling, I was just like, wow, that felt like 20 minutes in a very good way. I also think American Werewolf in London is a sensational example of how comedy and horror ride such similar lines in terms of their delivery and structure. It's beautiful. If you'd like to learn what people are talking about when they say how to deliver an effective scare and deliver an effective joke, often rely on similar elements. American Werewolf in London will hold them up side by side for you to examine. I can't say this like serves a broader purpose or has like the deeper theming of some of the better quality movies on this list. I would actually rate this movie at like a seven overall if I had to be like, I'm trying to be objective about it. But my own personal preference, I enjoyed the shit out of it. And I really love American Werewolf in London. It's very much so a product of its time, but in a way that ages well and feels like more of an art piece than something that is dated. That sounds weird to say about American Werewolf in London, but I mean it. If you like a horror movie that feels personal and close to the characters while having a simple story that is just well executed and brilliant effects that doesn't take itself too seriously, I think an American Werewolf in London could be something you enjoy just as much as I do. The horror is not a 10 out of 10. This is at like most a six, but damn, is it just a rock solid film. And finally, my last choice for this list is going to be a more modern pick that is going to give me an excuse to yell at the Oscars because all three of the genres I've been talking about are largely, in general, snuffed by the Oscars, which if you know me, I hate. And it drives me insane every year to see like, oh, movies that are either indie or fall into with these three subgenres, especially be completely ignored by them. And if you want a prime example of that, the fact that there was not even an Oscar nomination for the performances we saw in Hereditary is 
absurd. Toni Collette gave such an excruciating, brutal performance in Hereditary. The fact it was not even looked at by the Oscars should tell you everything you need to know because Jesus Christ. I have heard some people write off this performance as just like Nicolas Cage over the top. It's easy to go to that extreme as an actor. Are you stupid? No, it is not. I took a lot of acting in college. It was not my major, but I gave the best performances I could. And watching Toni Collette break down on screen and just expose her soul as an artist was exhausting just to watch. To write that off as easy to do is ridiculous. No, this as a performer is some of the best breakdown type acting I have ever seen in my life. Outside of just that, the score, the approach to trauma, the actual horror elements, everything comes together in this movie to be one of the greatest horror films ever created. I have not put this list in any particular order, but I'd have a hard time arguing against anyone who says this is their favorite. Hereditary is just absolutely stunning. To give you an idea of what this movie is about, it's somewhat in the title, Hereditary. It's about mental illness, grief, and coping in terrible ways. The family dynamic and a just falling apart that is so real and feels so close to the nerve while absolutely having fantasy elements at play and being crazy. As someone who has mental illness in their family that is genetic and passed down and has had to deal with that, get help, this movie hits on a level that no other that has tried to approach this topic has done for me. It's a showcase of what horror can do when you take it absolutely seriously and use the genre to explore the human mind and our own personal failings. Hereditary is heartbreaking. It's horrifying. It's beautiful. On a terror rating, I would actually say this goes to an 8 or a 9 for me because of just the shock I feel alongside with the characters in response to certain events that play out. I don't believe this film has a weak moment. You can nitpick some of the writing, but I don't care because I'm willing to forgive all of that for the sheer level of the craft that is put on display for almost every single other angle. It's one of the few examples where I've seen people give details detailed negative takes on this movie, and I always try and respect where a critic is coming from. But in this case, I understand you're coming from a position that's not me, but it's one of the few instances where I just go, I think you're wrong, because it, it hits on all fronts for me for what the horror genre can do, especially when blended with fantasy. But let me know your list of the top 10 sci-fi fantasy horror movies of all time in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out my book, Breach of Peace, in the links down below. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.